Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to show you how to extend KSQL with user-defined functions. This is a brand new API available in Confluent Platform 5.0. Now, KSQL comes with a library of built-in functions for things like manipulating strings and formatting timestamps and doing aggregations. It's a good library kind of the one you would expect to be there. But as of Confluent Platform 5, KSQL exposes an API that lets you write your own user-defined functions and user-defined aggregation functions. That's UDFs and UDAFs for those of you following along at home. Now, a UDF takes data from a single record, whether it's one value or multiple values from the record, just one record, and a UDAF, a user-defined aggregation function, takes many records as input and performs some operation on them to create a single result. Now, the process for writing a custom UDF or UDAF is very similar, so we'll just take a look at an example of a custom UDF. This is a Java API, and I'm not going to walk you through all the details of the particular UDF we're writing, but I do want you to know basically how it works. A UDF is just a POJO, a plain old Java object with some annotations. The class gets the UDF description annotation. This is where we specify the name our user-defined function will have when we call it from KSQL. And optionally, we can include a description as well. In this case, the name of the function will be anomaly. Methods inside that class get the UDF annotation. These are the actual implementations of the user-defined function. If you annotate more than one method inside the class with UDF, these will be overloads of the function. They'll all be called anomaly in the case of our example, but they'd have to have different type signatures. Anyway, the code in the UDF method does whatever it is you want your UDF or UDIF to do. In this case, we're calling a machine learning model implemented with the H2O library to find anomalous values in a collection. As we'll see in a few, and as you can tell if you're studying the code here, that list is actually a pile of space delimited numbers that come in as a big and slightly ugly string. This code parses them, passes them to the ML model, which has been trained in advance, and returns the result as a string. Let's quickly look at the dependencies of the build. The KSQL UDF artifact is the bare minimum you need to write your own UDF. This contains, among other things, the annotations we were just using. This particular UDF also depends on the H2O machine learning framework, so that's in the POM file too. And that's it. Now, this repo is linked in the description if you'd like to see more. Let's build that code and get an Uber jar. If you happen to be new to Java, an Uber jar is just a bundling of the compiled Java code along with all its dependencies. Uh, this way, the KSQL server can be sure it can run the UDF without having to go fetch any new jars or do anything like that that it's not in the business of doing. We're going to go to the UDF project's target directory now, which is where Maven puts jars by default, and copy the Uber jar to the Confluent Platform Etsy directory. Confluent Platform is installed locally, so the copy command is pretty simple in this demo. In production, you'd want to deploy the Uber jar to the production KSQL server image. I'm actually putting the Uber jar in a directory called ext, which is under Etsy KSQL, and that ext directory does not exist by default. You'll have to create it the first time you do this. Now let's go find the KSQL server.properties file, which is in the Etsy KSQL directory under the Confluent Platform installation. You'll need to edit that file to add the KSQL extension dir property pointing to the fully qualified path of the ext directory where we just put our uber jar. Note that that directory could be anything. Putting ext under Etsy is just a convention, but it's a convention that we recommend. All right, we've got our UDF built and installed. Let's see how it actually works. I'm going to fire up the KSQL server using the Confluent CLI. The Confluent CLI is a handy developer tool that makes development, and for that matter demos, a lot easier. Once the server is up, let me get into the KSQL CLI and take a look at this data we need to analyze with our fancy machine learning UDF. Taking a look at our topics, you can see we have this one topic called temperature. This is where the data of interest lives. Inspecting the temperature data itself, you can see, as I said before, it's a little ugly. Those values are just big strings. And sure, KSQL has some nice built-in string functions, but I think we can both agree that we don't want to go there. We'll be glad for that UDF in just a second. 
Before we get too far, let's register this topic as a stream called Car Sensor. And we'll also set our auto offset reset to earliest, so new KSQL queries will default to reading data from the start of topics and not the end. This makes this demo a lot more fun to do. A quick select from our stream, and we see that unformatted sensor data once again. I'd like to call our UDF, so let's list functions and make sure it's there. List functions shows us all available KSQL functions, even the built-in ones, but we can see that anomaly is in the list, just as we specified in the UDF description annotation back in the Java code. So things appear to be working just fine. Let's take it for a spin. We can do a select with it, passing the sensor input field of the car sensor stream. Each of those nasty strings gets passed to our UDF where they are duly parsed, the parse values fed to that pre-trained model. The model makes a decision about which value is anomalous. Of course, those details are totally transparent to us here in KSQL. I don't need to know a thing about machine learning, or even that machine learning is the basis of the UDF. Here, I'm just calling a function. Let's make that select a persistent query so we've got a new stream to work with, reflecting the output of our anomaly detection model. Note that we're casting the return type of anomaly to a double. That Java code returned a string, but we want to do some threshold detection on it, so we'll need a double in our next step. After a quick select on that new anomaly detection stream, we again see these messages being processed through the ML model. Selecting on this stream actually doesn't call our UDF anymore, though. This stream now contains the data that has already been processed through that algorithm, and the results are just there in the stream available for anyone to query. As a reminder to ourselves, let's do a describe extended and see what's up with that stream. You can see the underlying Kafka topic, which has the same name as the stream. Uh, you can even see how many messages have been processed, how many are happening per second, and when the last message came through. Now, we can take that stream and easily do some more filtering on it. The whole point of our UDF is to find anomalous temperature readings from our sensor data, but suppose we only want to see the anomalous values that are greater than some threshold, kind of like anomalies within the anomalies. Easy. Now we only see the values that are greater than four. And we could go on from there. You could make that a persistent query and then take some action when you find anomalous values outside your range. Now, this demo has car language in it, and so maybe your domain is some next generation connected car system. Perhaps then you'd want to join this stream to a table that knows more about the cars themselves and the subscribers to the service. So you could send a message to the driver, letting him or her know that something is about to explode. Uh, well, all of the analysis required to get you to that conclusion takes place in KSQL. In this case, enhanced by a custom UDF. So I hope you've seen how easy it is to extend KSQL with your own user-defined functions and user-defined aggregation functions. Definitely check out the example code and get started writing your own. And for more on KSQL, you can always go to confluent.io slash KSQL.